Hi everyone, I'm Sean and welcome back to the 101. So for a while now we've been talking about malware. You remember, those nasty little files that get on your system and wreak havoc? But longtime fans may remember that we've also noted that attackers have lots of ways to wreak havoc on your system without using any new files at all. So how do we talk about all the different ways we can get owned? Well, I'll answer your question with another question. What is a TTP? Okay, so first things first. TTP stands for Tactics, Techniques, and Procedures. It's a term first adopted by the US military. It is now used across all branches as the official way to describe what and how enemy forces move and attain their objectives. Now there's a strong corollary between that and what we in security have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's precisely why we use the term TTP to describe the very same thing. Before we get into the basics though, let's see that definition. A TTP is a collective term that describes an independent action or behavior that occurs during a cyber attack. A TTP comprises what an attacker does or the state of that activity to achieve the goal of the attack. So I wanna make a point here to say that TTP is a critical term to understand when it comes to how we look at and how we address modern security challenges. Cyber attacks or cyber crime or espionage or insert malicious activity here is complex. I'm talking about the literal bits and bytes of an attack, the step-by-step -step progression from point A to point B. And that path can be very convoluted and seemingly benign. So we use TTPs as a way of contextualizing and understanding what actually is going on. All right, let's take us a step deeper and look at TTPs through the lens of a familiar childhood game, Capture the Flag. So in this game, the rules are simple. The red team must locate the flag of the blue team, capture it, and bring it back to their side. Now, from the perspective of the red team, the goal of this game is to capture the flag and their intent is to use any means necessary to do so. So in this particular round, the red team's gonna try to confuse the blue team by sending their entire team up the left-hand side, but secretly having two members double back and capture the flag from the right. So what are our TTPs in this scenario? Let's look at each aspect individually. First, tactics. You can think about tactics like the high-level narrative of what the attacker is trying to do. In this case, the red team's tactics are to confuse the blue team and to sneak up on the flag. Techniques, on the other hand, are the methods by which an individual may go about accomplishing a task. In this case, one of the techniques the red team's going to employ is to wrap a red cloth around a small bush in sight of the blue team to try to confuse them. Another technique might be to crawl on all fours in order to be stealthy by the flag. Techniques aren't prescriptive. They just describe a way of getting something done. Procedures, that's the how. The step-by-step -step events that happen in a very specific order to accomplish a task. First, rip off a piece of red cloth. Then, locate a small shrub inside of the blue team's base. Then, tie said cloth around said bush. You get the idea. So no matter what the action or state is, TTPs are helpful because they enable us to easily categorize and assess what actually is going on. But remember, the key here is to look at TTPs as a whole. The blue team is going to keep their flag safe if they can account for every TTP. If they only focus on movement up the left, and they can't or don't monitor other TTPs, like immobile short player or crinkling leads, then they may overcommit resources in the wrong area. They're gonna miss the smaller, subtler actions of the red team, and ultimately, they're gonna lose the game. So the trick is to remember that a TTP can be anything. Running known malware is a TTP, but so is establishing a network connection. When one application opens another, like any time you hyperlink from an email, that is another TTP. So then remember that any given TTP may or may not be malicious, but when you analyze them as a whole, that's when you can begin to understand intent. And when you understand intent, you can start to materialize the goal of the attacker, and that's how you keep them from capturing your flag. So what did we learn today? TTP is shorthand for tactics, techniques, and procedures. It's the way we describe the actions and behaviors, or the state of those actions and behaviors within an incident. TTPs represent every single step from the seemingly benign to the obviously malicious. And they can help us in understanding the progression of an attack so that we can uncover the intent and the goals of the attacker. By constantly monitoring and analyzing those TTPs, defenders can begin to uncover patterns. And those patterns can be critical in detecting a threat while in progress and stopping it before it accomplishes its goals. In the end, TTPs are the key to understanding root cause. And when we remediate that root cause, we deal a staggering blow to attackers and we make it extremely difficult for them to get back in our network, back on our endpoints to achieve their malicious goals. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for tuning in and join us next week as we continue to talk about endpoint security one question at a time. As always, if you have questions, you wanna hear about them. You can reach us on Twitter at carbonblack underscore inc and use the hashtag the 101 or just email us at the 101 at carbonblack.com. My name's Sean, thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.